Yeah, actually, my book, um, I wrote it, you know, this is, there is something called in medicine practice is evidence-based medicine. So what I'm writing there, it has to be well authenticated by the uh, supported literature. And uh, that's how it's a bit different, you know, say like if I say that um, metabolic syndrome uh, is like this and it affects the Indian community. So how many percentage of Indian communities are from that? Why it suffers in Indian community? Why it suffers in Southeast Asian countries? So it is based on the medical facts. It's not a, it's not a kind of a fiction. And I just want to tell you, this book um, is a kind of thing. I mean, as a practitioner, you know, uh, when I used to practice, you know, I used to get a lot of questions from the public, from the patients, you know. And then I found that uh, certain things like nurses, uh, medical staff, paramedical staff, nurse educators, they do give the information, but still some information is missing between the patient and the doctor. And doctor doesn't have enough time that he can sit with a patient for half an hour and, um, and an hour to tell everything. So this particular book covers all those questions which has been asked me uh, as a doctor. And then secondly, before uh, writing this book, you know, I had been trying to um, uh, talk to people of different, different field, like engineers, um, accountants, banking um, uh, people, and different, different kind of people. And then I gathered that what kind of thing they want from the doctor, which they are not getting. So this okay. book contains everything which is very authentic. And uh, I have not started doing it. I wanted to upgrade because medical things, they change very quickly, but basis will not, will never change. As a doctor, you know what we do, we must know the symptoms and then we investigate and then we treat. Same way, we have to um, try to find out what are the problems the youngster, especially the college student they face. And to me, it appears, the first problem is that students, you know, they face in any kind of setup, whether it's in India or overseas, is the stress and tension. Stress and tension is related to studies. It's related to exams. It's related to the results. And results, the teachers have got the expectation from his students. The parents have got expectation. So, and then the person himself has got some expectation. These three things, they combine and they give the stress and the other thing is the social uh, stress in social stress uh, which is comes from friends which comes from class fellows which comes from roommate if they are staying in the hostel and nowadays you know the relationship is especially boyfriend girlfriend is a very common thing so that's also one of the point of stress this is the first thing is i covered the stress because stress everybody suffers whether it's a child, whether it's a young, whether it's a in job, whether it's an old. So stress is a factor which we have to learn how to live. Second thing is the depression and suicidal ideation. Uh, um, a study, one of the study which I was reading a few days back, you know, in uh, one of the very um, authentic uh, medical journal, it says in one of the study in Europe, 27.2% students, they suffer from stress. And something about 11.2% students, they have got a suicidal ideation. So, um, and especially our Indian students, you know, they are too much affected by Bollywood and Hollywood. And then you see that, you know, what's going in, Bollywood is all drugs and alcohol and so many things. So that's depression is one of the thing which is very can be there can be a real problem in among the students. Third thing is drugs and alcohol. And drugs and alcohol, I mean, one shouldn't 
one shouldn't doubt that alcohol and the drugs is one of the may could be one of the key problem among the youth fourth okay. thing i say smoking and is i will not much stress on smoking because uh, i know that government of india is doing a lot of things on smoking and we when we see any indian film they give the warning there fifth thing comes the lack or uh, less lack of opportunity for physical exercise if especially when you are a student in college because there is so much work they have to do at home there's so much work they have to do in the college they have to do so much work in the library that they do not get an opportunity to go and do physical activities as far as i feel you know that uh, the food standard food at home you know on which we take it every day in terms of uh, like uh, roti chapati rice whatever food in you know, depending on the which part of the country or which part of the country or which state of india you living most of the time in the food inside the house is enough is adequate health wise because uh, in every house they have got dal they have got uh, veggies they have got rotis they have got rice same way um, in the hostels the food may not be 100% ideal but is also not bad the most important thing to the diet comes to the students is the, which they take it outside uh, their uh, outside the hostel mess outside the home uh, like uh, i'm suggesting towards the fast food like uh, um, like yes. mcdonalds like burger king like pizza hut and other kind of indian fast food like uh, chola bhatura and uh, samosas uh, and um, chaat papri these things so this food is not really good for the health point of view so what i suggest that um, as a student as a youth you know, or anybody you know we should try to restrict ourselves to the fast food as much as possible uh, we cannot totally stop the don't take the food outside the house or outside the um, the mess they have to restrict okay we will not take fast food more than once a week or more two times in a week or we take a, a kind of a control fast food so that we do not overeat for any reason when you time i mean they have already body has built up there their bones have developed well and uh, uh, their body composition is normal so they need the protein they need carbs and they need the fat and right from say i should say uh, from 20 years of age till 70 years of age the food composition doesn't change much but okay. and that's true the youngster they need more protein you know but more more protein means like um, let's say their weight is about 60 kilograms so they need about 60 grams of protein per day roughly is about 0.9 to 1 uh, gram per kilogram body weight so how do we get, get these ones they can get from various sources for example i mean as a vegetarian the our protein will come from dal but dal uh, what we take is very little quantity of dal because it's mostly water and substance is very less but yeah. the chapati itself is quite rich in protein roti um, wheat has got is quite rich is about 11 to 13 percent and dal also had almost similar protein so we are even if we are not saying as we are not saying meat but we are still getting protein from wheat we are getting from dal and if they are vegetarian like they should use uh, the protein things uh, more in the terms of like dal chana rajma beans they are all rich in proteins and as well as the roti itself no? if they are vegetarian and non vegetarian then things are a bit easy like uh, if they need the protein uh, so like if they take 100 grams of chicken they will get something about 15 to 20 grams of protein depending how it's being cooked same thing with the other kind of 
red meat protein. But protein, we do not require an axis. We just require, um, uh, require to the normal requirement. Like if diet is very high protein diet, then it also has got consequences. Like it can affect the kidneys. It can put the pressure on the liver and it can push pressure on the whole metabolism of the body. So I don't think that the youngsters, they need to take extra protein. But I'll suggest that uh, as even as a youngster, hmm, if they have got a, say something about a glass of milk, hmm, milk has a good amount of protein. And if, if they're taking egg, that gives a natural, real protein. So if they, even if they are vegetarian, they still can have milk, maybe about say 300 to 400 uh, grams of milk per uh, cc's of milk per day, one egg per day, and normal diet. That's just more than sufficient. And lastly, I will say that um, the bone health is very important. Bone health means the health of our skeleton system is very important. So they must keep taking milk or milk products, and uh, they should do exercise. Exercise keep the bone mass healthy because. If a young person of 20 or 25 years, hmm, he's looking to be healthy at 75, only way they can keep healthy if they are taking care of their body and their calcium and their bone mass. Yeah, actually for keeping healthy, one doesn't need to do a marathon every day. They can do exercise 30 to 40 minutes. And if they do not have the time, they can split the time, you know. I mean, they can do 10 minutes in the morning. They can do 10 minutes whenever they get time during uh, their lunch break or um, free lunch. Or, and then otherwise they can do in the evening. And then when they are weekends are there, they can compensate all those uh, leftover times. 30 minutes is minimum, 30, 40 minutes every day. And the exercise, um, like some, uh, if you're in the room, just do some static jogging there do like some um, some kind of um, uh, PE at, um, within, uh, within the house. And if you got somebody has got treadmill, just do treadmill for 10 minutes and go on. Okay. One doesn't need to do that. They should complete 30 uh, minutes at one go. Just do a little bit exercise. Little bit is better than doing nothing. Actually, researches show that um, the benefit of uh, even the... Um, um, benefit of doing the SI, which is split in three, four parts, is still there, then, but, uh, then not doing any at all. As for the exercise is concerned, walking and running, I mean, it's, if you're walking, you're still burning the calories. If you're running, you're still burning the uh, calories. Only thing is that you're running, you're burning the calories quickly. I mean, it's, it's, it burns the calories fast, you know. So walking versus running, um, a mid between you comes fast walk is also equally good. But so long as you can accelerate your heart a little bit with what we call cardio, uh, that's okay. I mean, stress has been always there, but uh, somehow I feel that when we were students, we had only one stress about the studies. We do not have any other st stresses, you know. Because most of our stresses were taken by our parents. I um, mean, you had been talking earlier about the physical activities. Yes, Exercise sir. itself has got a very positive effect on on the mental health. You know, yeah. Because um, the study shows those people, those who are doing physical activity, are exercise every day. They have got better concentration in the studies. They have got better positive attitude, and uh, and they do uh, they do better in the exams and they uh, are they are better in socially also so in fact you know doing exercise tries to take care of the stress it reduces the stress because uh, all your energy physical energies which are going in stress they have gone in exercise when they're going to exercise you're free from the botheration depression i mean in broad sense is the lack of interest you know in anything you know i mean once a person has got a negative attitude for everything hmm? i mean he feels that 
he's not um, he cannot cope up this study he's going to fail so what but this kind of attitude, negative attitude in everything if we tell him about the diet he's got negative attitude if we talk about exercise he's got negative attitude and then he is not doing good in the studies that means from the stress he is going to the depression because this is a kind of a complex stress depression and societal ideation so these things they cannot be distinguished you know about depression and stress there are specific tests which the psychologists or psychiatrists can do and find it out there are there are particular ways medically um, there are some kind of questionnaires and some kind of uh, discussions which psychiatrists they are trained psychologists are also being trained to find out whether this particular person is suffering from stress or depression or has got some suicidal tendencies these things can be easily uh, distinguished and so like as i said you know there should be a mentor for a group of 10 students so that they know what their uh, um, students are doing secondly like i said that there should be a dietitian in the mess to tell about the diet same way there should be a counselor in this college uh, especially as psychologists should be there so that they can find it out and they can treat them and they can alert this the authorities beforehand